What is the life cycle of a system? The information life cycle is important so the system owner knows where in their system information is flowing and in what part of the life cycle that information is. So this topic will talk about the information life cycle and how it applies to the RMF. In this video, we'll be looking at task P13, information life cycle. All stages of the information life cycle are identified and understood for each information type processed, stored, or transmitted by the system. This is the task P13. Potential inputs include mission business functions and mission business processes the system will support, system stakeholder information, authorization boundary information, information about other systems that interact with the system, for example, information exchange, connection agreements, system design documentation, system element information, and a list of system information types. You may notice this last bullet point is the task conducted earlier in this step. Expected outputs for this task are documentation of the stages through which the information passes in the system, such as data map or model illustrating how information is structured or is processed by the system throughout its life cycle. Such documentation includes, for example, data flow diagrams, entity relationship diagrams, database schemas, and data dictionaries. Primary responsibility for this task is the senior agency official for privacy, the system owner, and the information owner or information steward. Supporting roles for this task include chief information officer, mission or business owner, security architect, privacy architect, enterprise architect, system security engineer, and privacy engineer. This aligns with the system development lifecycle for a new system with the initiation step concept requirements definition. If it's an existing system, it aligns with operations and maintenance. This also aligns with the cybersecurity framework task ID AM3, asset management, organizational communication and data flows are mapped, as well as ID AM4, asset management, external information systems are cataloged. Information lifecycle describes the stages through which information passes typically characterized as creation, collection, processing, dissemination, use, storage, and disposition to include destruction or deletion. And that's defined by OMB A130. A quick map of what these steps are is presented on this slide for ease of understanding. Identifying and understanding how each information type is processed during all stages of the life cycle helps organizations identify considerations for protecting the information, identify the organization's security and privacy risk assessments, informs the selection and implementation of controls. So we have to first define the types of information that will live on the information system, and then we have to determine for each of those information types, which stages of the information lifecycle will be in use during the system's operation. For example, a system may only be used for storage of information. So that portion of the life cycle would be addressed for each of the information types. Identification and understanding of the information life cycle facilitates the employment of practices to help ensure, for example, that organizations have the authority to collect or create information, develop the rules related to the processing of information in accordance with its impact level, create agreements for information sharing, follow retention schedules for the storage and disposition of information. So defining these stages and the life cycle of the information types that are processed by the system is important. For example, if the information has PII traits in it, if the information is PII, then we'd want to make sure that we are authorized by the system owner and the authorizing official to process PII. It's important to define these things up front. Using tools such as a data map enables organizations to understand how information is being processed so that organizations can better assess where security and privacy risks could arise and where controls could be applied more effectively. So a data map generally shows how information flows into and out of the system, interconnections with external systems, and how the system itself connects with 
system elements inside of the authorization boundary. This allows us to see where the information is flowing and at what stage of the information lifecycle each of those components is processing the information. It's important for organizations to consider the appropriate delineation of the authorization boundary and the information systems interaction with other systems because the way information enters and leaves the system can affect the security and privacy risk assessments. Exactly what we just talked about. We want to determine how information comes into the system, how it's processed by the system, and how it leaves the system so that we know where in our system that information is flowing and where to best provide the controls that can protect the information at the level at which it needs to be protected. The elements of the system are identified with sufficient granularity to support such risk assessments. So we'll want to look at each system component or elements of the system, system elements, to determine what type of information will live on that element and what stage in the life cycle that information will be at when it's on that element of the system. Identifying and understanding the information life cycle is particularly relevant for the assessment of the security and privacy risks since information may be processed by a system in any of the SDLC phases. So as we align with the SDLC and each of these tasks, our system will also align with different phases of the SDLC in the processing of different types of information. For example, in the testing and integration phase of the SDLC, procedural actual, or what we would call live information or live data, would likely raise security and privacy risks, but using a substitute or a synthetic data may allow an equivalent benefit in terms of system testing while at the same time reducing risk. So let's not put information on a system too early. Let's not use that live information too early. Let's use synthetic information when we can if it will allow us to test the system sufficiently. So this will drive down risk because we won't have that live information on a system that's still going through the testing process. So references for this task are OMB A130, OMB M or Memorandum 13-13, NARA, RECM, the NIST Cybersecurity Framework, and IR8062. In closing, in this module we discussed the task P13, its inputs, outputs, roles, responsibilities, SDLC and Cybersecurity Framework lifecycle alignment. We talked about the information lifecycle, the information type processing, the information life cycle practices, data maps, authorization boundaries, system elements, and information life cycle and the SDLC, how they apply. If any of these things don't look familiar to you, I suggest you go back and watch the video again. But if it's all good to go, go on to the next.